Hey everybody, uh, you know the Day State Red Wolf is just an amazing air rifle. It looks amazing, it's well built, and it's extremely accurate. Uh, but my question was, I wonder if there is anything I can do to this rifle, add to this rifle to make it even more accurate. Is that even possible? Well, Ben Spencer at Extreme Field Target, he introduced me to a kit that he made that he's developed uh, for the Red Wolf, and it's called the, get ready for this, the Barrel Tensioning Harmonic Dampening Kit. And that is a mouthful. Uh, so we're going to call it the BTHD for short, okay? Uh, he sells this kit for all calibers of Red Wolf, both uh, regular and high power. And he's also making his kit for uh, custom uh for the Pulsar, they state Pulsar. And uh, Ben Spencer and Extreme Field Targets, had, they've had great results with the high-powered rifles, uh, shooting Extreme Field Target and bench rest and that kind of thing. Uh, they've had really good results with this, this kit that he's developed. And, um, but I'm, I'm a hunter field target shooter. And so that means if you're not familiar, I'm shooting a, a standard power Red Wolf 177 uh, under 20 foot pounds of energy for the rules, for the after rules. And we're shooting targets as metal targets, uh, as close as 10 yards, but as far as 55 yards with a 177. Um, and the target that we're hitting at, uh, the paddle we're hitting at 55 yards is an inch and a half. That's, a, that's, his, uh, that's the, the size that we're shooting at 55 yards. So my question was, you know, can I improve my groups out at 55 yards? You know, the groups are pellet on pellet on out to, you know, 35 yards, and then they start to open up a little bit. And But 55 yards, is, you know, my group is still small, and it's I can win I can win matches with this rifle for sure. But I was wondering, can I make those group uh, groups even smaller? Can, can this kit help me get my groups even smaller at 55 yards? Now, you know, if wearing a kilt on the field target range would help me score points, I would do it. So Ben Spencer, he, he introduced me to his kit, and I was skeptical at first because, you know, the Red Wolf is already just an amazing air rifle, extremely accurate. I've had a lot of success. I've won a lot of matches with it. Um, it, it just does its job, and it's up to me to do mine. Uh, so I was a little skeptical if what he was saying was true, what his kit could do. Um, also, I didn't want to modify this rifle permanently. If it didn't work, I want to be able to remove whatever I put on it or changed about it uh, back to the way it was. I, I'm not interested in a permanent mod. Um, so he sent me his prototype of his kit and it was a prototype and it was actually a partial kit because uh, there's three parts to his kit and I'll show you those parts here in a minute. Um, but what I received was probably the most important part uh, and that's the barrel tensioner. And to install that, all I had to do was take off um, the shroud install the tube over the barrel, put the shroud back on. And I tested it before and after, same conditions. And um, once I installed the barrel tensioner part of his kit, I instantly saw results. I mean, even before I started measuring, I could just tell the rifle was even more accurate. Um, instantly, I went from, at 55 yards, I went from an average of 27.5 millimeter group size to 18.9 millimeter. Uh, group size. And that's just a few millimeters, but when you do the math, that's a 31% decrease in group size at 55 yards. Uh, and that could help me score points for sure at a match. And one or two points, that's the difference between first and second place. And, um, you know, but wait, why am I telling my competition my secret with this kit? Mm. Anyway, Let's, uh, I'll show you now how to install the full kit on the Day State Red Wolf. So this is what you get in the BTHD kit. And there's a few pieces here. First is for barrel tensioning. Um, you've got this carbon fiber tube that's got some rubber uh, spacers on it. And um, I'll show you how to put that on. That slides over your barrel. And these spacers uh, take up any, any space between um, this tube and your barrel shroud. It works with this spring uh, tensioner 
and I'll show you how it slides on. And what it does, is it just creates uh, a little more tension and stiffening into your barrel. And so that's that. And then you've got uh, these barrel shims. And this, this is brass, this is a sheet of brass, very thin, uh, almost the thickness of like some really, thi really thick aluminum foil, but it's brass. He's cut a couple pieces here for me to, to size and gave me some extra in case I screw up whenever I'm sliding it in uh, with a barrel. And I'll show you that. I've already actually used this piece once I was testing uh, this kit, how to install it before I show you. So I know what I'm talking about. And um, then the last thing is stock bedding. These are 3D pieces, 3D printed uh, pieces that slide, they go down in your stock. And what they do is besides just giving, uh, making sure you have a really good seat for your stock to your action, it actually brings your, your stock down just, just a little bit. I mean, this is pretty thin, but it moves your stock down just a little bit to make sure that your stock is not touching your, uh, your air bottle. Um, just to make sure there's no vibrations there between your 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 bottle and action and your stock and just creates a, a a good seat for your stock so all these together the whole point of all these is to to clean up any uh dirty harmonics between uh when you fire a shot from your barrel to your action um, and your your action to your stock and just stiffening things up taking up any slack um, and making all these things work um, harmoniously <laughs> with each other. So that's what you get in the kit. It's pretty simple. Um, so now we will install this. I will show you how to install it and um, we'll get going. Okay, so we'll install this kit now. I had to, um, we're gonna have to take off the shroud and we're gonna have to take the barrel uh, out, off. Um, I had to actually remove my scope because my scope rings were, uh, one of them was right on top of one of the, the screws that hold the, the barrel in, uh, unfortunately. Hopefully, uh, you, you may be able to install this kit without even removing your scope if you can get to, to this rear or both of these um, uh, screws that hold the barrel in. Uh, but anyway, I have to take mine off, so I just marked it with some white out so I knew exactly where it goes back. So. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is take off this shroud. All right, next I'm going to take off um, the stripper here. And to do that, all you need to do is use a, a big Allen wrench or key or um, screwdriver or something and just stick in here and it'll, it'll pop right off. There you go. Took that off. Next, I'm going to, um, loosen the screws that actually hold the barrel on. All right. I'm going to move my camera a little bit so you can see a little better. I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take this front one completely out. The reason I'm going to do that is so whenever we put the barrel back in, I can see um, where exactly where it was lined up before, and get everything um, seated pr uh, properly. I'm just going to loosen this back one. I could take it out, but there's really not much reason to. All right, so we've got that. Now we can slide out our barrel. Just like that. And so you can see um, right here the two little divots where those grub screws hold your barrel in and they've got a little indentation there. So that's what we're gonna line up later. Um, this is a good time if you if you want to, you can replace your uh, breech seal if for some reason you need to, um, if it's worn. Um, also the, the barrel uh, O-rings here. Um, I just replaced these uh, whenever I was testing this. So they've been replaced. Um, but now we're going to install the brass plate or brass shim and what it's going to do is it's going to wrap around just like just like this right here. Um, we're going to wrap it around tight. We're going to leave the, the two uh, indentations that where the grub screws uh, screw down and hold your barrel. We're going to leave that free, but we're going to wrap this brass around the barrel. And all this is doing is taking out just uh, just a fraction uh, fraction of a millimeter 
around this barrel as it slides into the action and, and making a, a tighter fit. Um, one thing, and let me, let me go ahead and mention this, if, if you're gonna remove these uh, O-rings on your barrel, the best thing to do to get them out, um, it, you can kind of pinch them and see how it, it kind of it kind of pooches up and then you can stick a needle in that gap and get them out without damaging them. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna put some, um, some silicone grease on here so it's kind of sticky and put my brass shim on here and I'm actually gonna use one of the old O-rings that came off of this barrel to help hold that brass shim on as I slide it in. Okay, so we're gonna do that now. So you can see I've got the brass wrapped around the uh, barrel. I'm gonna hold it tighter than this, but I've got that old O-ring on there to kind of help hold it together for me. And I'm gonna put a little more grease on the outside of this. All right, so now I'm gonna do my best to hold this tight and slide it into the action. And I'm gonna try not to crinkle or crimp this brass sheet. And I hope, I hope I'll be able to get it in there. I kind of bent this edge here a little bit, but we'll see what happens. Just kind of wiggling it. here toward the end. I'm going to cut off that um, old o ring. I probably could leave it on there, but just to make sure, I'm going to cut it off. finish sliding this in. So since I lift out this scr uh, screw, I can see, I can move my barrel around and I can see the uh, indentation there and make sure it lines up. So now I can tighten up these screws. Okay, so now my barrel is mounted back in the action, and next we're going to put on the barrel tensioner. Um, okay, this is the barrel tensioner. We're gonna first put on the spring. We'll slide the spring on that. Then we're gonna slide carbon fiber tube on, like so. And as we put the air stripper back on, what it's going to do is, is compress this spring and give it tension. And um, so we'll put that on now. 
me slide this so you can see. And it's just gonna start make con to make contact with the carbon fiber tube. And as you tighten this, it's going to put more and more pressure over here. I'm gonna kind of guide this spring and center it with my fingers just to make sure it's in the center as I tighten this. And it's compressing that spring. Might have to back off and try again if it gets a little wonky. It's pretty close. And just going to get it a little snug. Okay. So that is on. Now I can put my shroud back on. screws. Next is the stock bedding and like I said he gives you these 3D printed um, pieces of plastic. They're thin and um, one lays down in the stock just like so. Kind of line up the holes. And the other goes right here at your fill port. Uh, it's actually easier to put this on the action and then install the stock onto the action. So I'll show you that next. So here's where I'm gonna put this uh, stock bedding on my um, fill port just like that. It actually stays on a little easier if you put it on the action than putting it on the stock. So now all I have to do is put my action in my stock. and tighten my bolt. Now, as I said, the uh, stock bedding, it actually moves your stock down just a little bit. I mean, just a little bit. And all it's, well, besides giving a good uh, seat for, for your stock to your action, it actually does pull it off of the barrel just a little bit. And I never noticed before I installed this kit, but my stock was actually touching the barrel. I couldn't, uh, um, not the barrel, but the uh, bottle. I couldn't slide a piece of paper through it. So, um, and now I can. So. It's moving the stock down just a little bit. Now, um, it, it does affect your view of the screen a little bit. I can still read it. It's not a problem. But I can tell that it is setting just a little bit lower um, for that screen than it was before. But it's like I said, it's not a problem. I can read it. Um, it doesn't bother me. So that's how I installed the kit. Now, the trickiest part is getting that uh, barrel shim um, on the barrel uh, lined up correctly and get it all slid in um, without crinkling that um, brass sheet 
And you can do it though, uh, but I made a mistake of putting grease between that metal brass shim and the barrel. And all that did was allow that shim to slip around and give me trouble. So I went back and installed it again, took off all that, all that grease and it, it actually slid in much easier, had an easier time with it. And anytime you're using grease uh, on your air rifle and especially with this install, um, be very conservative with it. Um, I put a little bit of grease on the uh, O-rings uh, and that's a good idea, but don't overdo it. Um, more is not necessarily better and you can actually cause some problems if you put too much grease in there. So just be really conservative with the grease. Um, ben Spencer, he actually also suggests that you uh, put that barrel shim closer to the muzzle end on, on, the, on the barrel there. Um, before and after installing this kit, you'll notice less of a point of impact change if you have that shim closer to the muzzle end. It's not a huge deal if your point of impact changes before and after the kit. All you have to do is, is just click your scope a little bit and get your, um, your zero where you want it. It's not a huge deal, but just something to be aware of. And every time you take off this barrel, uh, try to put, with this kit on, try to put that uh, shim at the back on at the same place just for consistency and you should notice less of a change of uh, point of impact whenever you do that so um so you know i i didn't have much trouble with this install i learned a few things Ho hopefully you did too um my initial setup where i saw the 31 percent improvement in my group size at 55 yards that was actually with just the uh the barrel tensioner tube part of the kit and um, so that might be all you want to do. You might not want to take off your barrel and fool with it. Um, so you might want to just put on that tube. That's the, the easiest thing to do. And uh, I had great result with it and that might be all you want. So you might want to try that first. Um, so I give, definitely give this kit a thumbs up for sure. Uh, the BT HD kit, it retails for $175. And it's available at, at the Extreme Field Target uh, website, which is azxft.com, azxft.com. And so I'd like to thank Ben Spencer and Extreme Field Target for this great mod for the Day State Red Wolf. And I think you'll like it too. Thanks for watching.